Uh, Bellar is the executive producer. He's sort of a mentor yeah. for you. Uh, how did you guys meet, or what was your working relationship? I, I, uh, I went to this his film school that uh, he had in Sarajevo. Okay. The film factory it's called. And it was an amazing school, you know, because uh, all the people he brought there was uh, uh, usually they came for like a week or something, and uh, we spent the whole day with them, and we had the dinner in the evening, and it was uh, like Tita Switzerland, Carlos Ricardas, uh, Apicha Pong, uh, Gus von Sant, uh, Christian Muncio, and it, it was so good to see all these people, you know, and uh, they all work differently, differently, and, you know, it was so interesting to see that nothing was like a right or wrong, and uh, they they had so different, like, working methods. What what year would this have been? The, I, I started 2013. Okay. And uh, I had then start working on uh, the script of, of LAMP, and... Uh, Basically, I was I was always working on that, and uh, Bella was uh, also reading the script, and uh, uh, yeah, he was just what do you say? He was always courage, courage. I don't know how to say this word, <laughs> but you know he was uh, encouraged. Yeah, you know that uh, to be yourself and be brave, and you know you, you should just be you, you know. And uh, I, it, he he was very helpful, and uh, he put put his name on the film, so, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so thankful, you know, for what he did for us. Now, I noticed on some of your credits, uh, you, you worked special effects, uh, like on um, The Tomorrow War, so is it whenever a film comes into Iceland to shoot, you know, an international production, there, yeah. there, everybody in Iceland must know everybody else in the film community, right? Yeah, 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 it's, it's, so it's when, a, so when big. a big film comes in, it's just like everybody knows about it, and it's just like, well, these are the people that yeah. you know you need to talk to. And uh, I, I've been working in in the film industry for like 30 years, just in like a almost every department. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. So uh, I think that was also very important because uh, all of the crew, you know, most of the crew in Iceland is. Uh, they are just my friends, and it was so good, you know, to uh, doing your first film and just have your friends around you, you know, that uh, they were, everybody was, you know, doing the extra thing, you know, and uh, helping out, running between departments, and uh, so, yeah, I, I had an amazing crew that were just almost all my friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, didn't Interstellar shoot in Iceland? Or yeah. Did you work on that one? No, I was not in that. Okay. But I was in Batman Begins, you know, with Christopher Nolan. And uh, yeah. So, so um, obviously, you spent a lot of time, a lot more time than I realize on this film. If you've been working on it for like seven or eight years, uh, or I leading uh, maybe what five years leading into production, or I think uh, me and Sean we. I had to spend some time doing this sketchbook, you know, and uh, before my producers uh, introduced me to Sean. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, me and Sean, I think we started working together like 2009. Uh, just, we didn't write the script. Uh, I think we were just, we were just meeting every week for like three hours or something. And, uh, yeah, just coming up with you know, uh, and, uh, you know, I think after, like, five years of meeting, then uh, we, you know, show took over and wrote the script. Uh, Numi Mike Bergeron from Houston. Yeah. Uh, it's a real pleasure. Um, so you lived in Iceland as a young girl, mm -hmm. and you've been a child actress. Your first role was in an, uh, an Icelandic film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was seven, a strange kind of Viking film by a crazy Icelandic director. <laughs> but that's how it started. And uh, I think I was always waiting for Lamb to come. <laughs> and it felt like it brought me back to my roots and reconnected, re me, you know, as a human. And 
it's uh, before and after land for me. I, I you know, it's kind of <laughs> brought things out yeah. of me and reminded me of who I am. Interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, so how long did you actually live in Iceland as as a youth? Uh, I mean, because you you moved back to Sweden to yeah. Come? I moved school, there when or? I was five, and I think we stayed for like three years, and then we moved back to Sweden, and I was devastated. <laughs> I kind of saw myself as Icelandic, and I refused to speak Swedish. <laughs> so I went back every summer, just me. My family stayed in Sweden. I went back to my grandmother and was like working in her greenhouses and riding horses and just being, sucking up like everything Icelandic is that good. And then uh, I think when I turned te- like 15 or 14, I stopped coming started drinking instead in the summers. But it was like I always had a very, very strong connection with Iceland. And it's, it's strange with Iceland because the, the country is so strong and it's basically like there's nowhere to hide. There's something with nature that just like it forces you to see yourself and it confronts you with like all your darkest and your, your best, the best parts of you, but also this like shit you don't want to look at, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think that happened on this one as well. It was, you know, it was a lot of pain came up. Mm. It was, it was uh, intense living Mar- Maria. Yeah. Um, your English is very good. Um, but you didn't originally speak English. So Not at you all. You learned it as when an adult. When I was adult. 25, yeah. So that's very difficult. Can you tell me uh, just how, how did you do that? I was shooting a movie, uh, Baby Call, in uh, Oslo. Um, on a Norwegian movie, and um, it was right when, like, the girl with the dragon tattoo, no, I was 27, I think, uh, uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo was, like, starting to, like, not I've already done a lot of press, and I didn't understand what people were saying, and I was starting, like, evenings and nights when I couldn't sleep, just watching American talk shows and reading papers and newspapers and looking, like, watching films without subtitles and just, like, home studying. <laughs> and I'm quite quick when I decide to do something. I have a good focus. And I, I live in London now, so it's funny. My son speaks English, and like when we argue, I try to switch to Swedish, and he does it. <laughs> so it's really weird. It becomes this like three languages going on in the house. But uh, but it was uh, uh, now when we've been doing interviews, and I've been doing some Icelandic interviews. It's almost like your brain is holding language, like one side for languages. Can you feel that? That it's hard to switch between. Yeah, you, you know just. Language is it's hard, hard for you, for me, for you, you know. in general. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's like, I mean, he, he doesn't use a lot of words, not in, like, not when he speaks Icelandic either. On set, when he was directing, sometimes I came in and he's like, and I was like, I think I know what you want. Like, <laughs> let me do one more, and I did one more take, and he's like, <laughs> so he was very uh, non nonverbal, yeah. <laughs> a nonverbal process. Hey, the first day of shooting was the, the birth scene of, yeah. the, of the little lamb. Uh-huh. Uh, how difficult was that? You kind of brought that up at the Q&A last yeah. night. Um, I mean, it was like you the, just had to I mean, to there's jump nothing in. you can do to prepare you for You can't that. prepare. You, there's no rehearsal. <laughs> uh, the, the farmer, the sheep farmer standing next to the camera, if something would yeah. go wrong, and then he was ready to jump in if I fucked up. So, <laughs> but, um, I mean, it was just... It, Strangely enough, I, it just felt like I knew how to do it. Yeah, I didn't you, really you did, and you know, yeah. uh, like like the farmer, you know, I remember. I was offered a job on the farm. <laughs> and he, he was just, uh, he thought it was so natural what he was doing, and uh, he was very surprised that, you know, that you had not been doing it for, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Yeah. But it was weird, like the smell stayed on, on my body for so long, in my hands, and it's quite like, it really... Like days. Days, weeks. I mean, it just it couldn't, it didn't wash off, really. Yeah. It was like a summer of... <laughs> <laughs> and th- th- that smell, like, I can still like, remember it and it defines that whole summer in a way. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, uh, traditionally, they say in movies, the hardest thing to do is to shoot with animals or children. Mm. And you're doing both in yeah. this film. Yeah, And uh, But, the, uh, so, uh, the dog and the cat, they're not central characters, but uh, they did obviously... They think so, though. Th- okay. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about, uh, is I mean, it Carlos it was, the yeah, Cat? Yeah, Carlos the Cat was such a diva. I mean, it was always this waiting game for the animals, yeah. and I was like, like, you know, sometimes I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, we need to wait for the lamb to sleep. And I was like, okay. I was really um, working on my patience. Yeah. 
And I, I'm, I have more patience now, actually. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm so thankful, you know, how patient you were, you know, you know working with the Sandman, because sometimes it took so long time, you know, doing the scenes with Atta and, uh, yeah, the mothership. Yeah. So how is that like for, for the production? Because obviously you have to have the animal wranglers there, yeah. you know, the, the cat and dog and sheep have to be assembled. So uh, what is that like? I mean, are, you, are they scheduled for a certain time and then you're doing all the other scenes around I mean, that? Like or time for the kids, right? Yeah. Kids hours. We were only allowed to work them certain amount of hours. Yeah, yeah you know, and uh, somehow uh, we also, we usually make like a, Plan A, B, and C when uh, working with uh, animals. And, uh, but no. you were very specific with what you wanted. Yeah, I yeah, felt yeah. like you were very um, clear in your guidance, and when you had it, we moved on. So there was mm. never any hesitation on, like, you were quite flexible. Yeah, yeah, you know, because we, we knew what we wanted, and uh, I, I think we, we almost always got it, you know, like we wanted, but. Uh, but we were we were always prepared to you know if we have to deal with the animals uh, on a different way. But it was very little talking. It was like the whole film crew just accepted the fact that this is a film where we don't we kind of tap into a different universe and you know this is our reality. Uh, you know nature and animals and us and we are all equals. Well, I, I okay. I got this sense of like. Like, the establishing shots are of this beautiful country, you know, verdant films, and, you know, you're driving through them. And I, I was like, like, where is the nearest town, you know? And that's not what the film's about, but occasionally I would think, like, where is, like, Peter getting his cigarettes, you know? Or, I mean, does he run down to the convenience store? No. He, you know, he's going to run out, or there's no... There's a gas that, station, like, an hour and a half. <laughs> I mean, that's okay, what it okay. was when, when yeah. I grew up. Like, yeah. you drove like an hour and a half to, to the store. No, but uh, it, it was like a decision that uh, we should not open up this world, you know. We should just stay there, you know. I, I think uh, I think it would change the film if we would... Yeah, oh, yeah I, I felt much more fulfilled once I once the ending is revealed yeah. of, oh, yeah, it makes so much more sense mm -hmm. that, you know... Uh, what is that clip from that Peter is in where it's, uh, he has no beard, but he's doing the music, the music video? video? Is that an actual, was he in an actual group? Or? No, no, I, uh, we just made it. Okay, okay. And, uh, because we also have the we also have the girl that is throwing him out from the car. That was weird too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but you accepted, that's just like, oh, yeah. okay, well that's yeah. where he came from. Yeah. 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 No, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I was, I was saying it before, but... Uh, you know, I my dream was always to make a music video, and uh, so this is my first music video <laughs> I have made. No. He wants to be hired to do more. Yeah. <laughs> no, some directors get into movie directing from music videos. You're going to do the opposite, and you know who knows. But um, they kind of gave me the rap signal. But I'm I'm curious. How was it? How did you like working with Brian De Palma? Um, it was complicated, to be honest. He was um. I mean, he's very, I felt like the way you and me work is very collaborative and we work very much together and kind of dance together. He's very much, he had his own way and he didn't communicate much. So it was very much, felt like the old school and the old way of working was kind of clashing a little bit with maybe the way I was, I used to work. But um, I think we found it took us some time to like arrive in a communication form, but then we did. But we're both very strong people. In the beginning, it was like clashing a bit. This is a film you you can't tell people what's going to happen in this film because to me, I, like if I knew what was going to happen, I would go in and, and the movie would kind of be ruined in a sense. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah sure. So it's just like it's interesting to discover a way to tell people about the film without telling them exactly. about the film. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you did, uh, it's interesting, like you're saying, the nearest gas station's an hour and a half away, uh, and I get that sense of isolation, because yeah. it is a film about isolation, For sure. in a sense. Yeah, and how you can start drifting then, and like, you can start creating your own reality, and w what is real, and you know, you, you 
kind of set your own term. And, and also this, uh, you know, time, you know, planting, you know, when they're just born, mm. it, it is, it is like a dream because, uh, you know, the everyone they're sitting away. I mean, this, you know, the thing is like it never gets dark, so it's like constant like daylight, and they like at two in the morning, it's like full on daylight, three in the morning daylight, and there's always someone waiting outside in the yeah. barn for like when, when the mother sheep is ready to to deliver. So it kind of becomes this like insomnia reality when you start drifting. It's like, am I seeing this or not? <laughs> yeah, you know, when you're in, uh, working over the night and it's yeah. totally bright outside, and then you go inside and for sleep, and then it's bright outside. You know, it's yeah. Just, uh, it's I think we all just like accept the fact yeah. that we would lose ourselves in yeah. this. Because usually, you know, it takes like six weeks. Yeah. And uh, you know, so you know, I, it. It is a strange period, you know, because I, I, uh, I've Life done it a lot. Life and death becomes really present. Like, it's like everything is right here. And you and there's stillborns, and there's like, you know, some, I remember on our farms, like, you know, kittens born without legs, or like a lamb came out, like, and with a one eye, and stuff like that. It's like, this is life. Yeah. And then you have to deal with it. And I feel like this movie was, I kind of forgot that we were making a movie someday. It just felt like a part of 